Today we're going to take a look at um, cleaning and removing a check valve on a big, you're going to look at it, three burner Coleman 426. And this is a 426D. Don't know if you can see that very well. There you go. Oh, uh, date of manufacture on this is July 1977. I bought this prior to Christmas. Uh, the guy uh, gave me a half a gallon of Coleman fuel and the stove. The stove um, was not working uh, because when you try to pump it up, pressure wouldn't hold in here. Pressure air is blowing right back through the center of the pump. Uh, that signified a, a bad check valve. There's a couple ways to uh, work with that. The way I worked was taking the pump out, taking the, the stem out, and squirting carburetor cleaner down, and letting it sit overnight and doing it again. That did not clean it. Your next move is to take the valve out. Uh, there's even a Coleman video that shows a guy just using a screwdriver, but when you've got a big screwdriver that is not uh, an eighth of an inch thick at the blade, and you're putting it on on soft brass, there's a good chance of trashing the valve if the valve's in there tight. Um, then you've got to get an easy out, and then you've got to get a new check valve. So instead, I went a route of buying a uh, buying a new tool from Classic Coleman Tool Parts up in New York. Um, it arrived today. Awesome looking tool. Uh, very solid uh, steel. A dedicated tool just for taking out check valves on Coleman's. And it, it only it, it not only works on uh, it's two ended so it works on really old Coleman's really new Coleman's um, it also works on Coleman lanterns anything that has pressurized fuel uh, the Coleman catalytic heaters just uh, the fuel comes up a wick hits the uh, catalytic device and uh, turns to heat there but anything pressurized like a like a, a stove or a a lantern has a check valve and if you Especially if, I don't know if over the years this ever had gasoline in it. It did come with Coleman fuel, but gasoline's got a lot of stuff that forms varnishes and uh, gummy stuff, and it'll it'll stop up that little BB from, from moving. So we're going we're gonna to go work on this and see what happens. And right after the intro. So here you've got a look at the inside. Uh, with this, you've got a uh, valve on this end to control um, this burner. Valve on this end to control this one. The main burner is the center burner. And this is pretty clean inside. There's a lot of very long leaf pine needles that were in here. There's still a few. I think this guy was from California, somewhere out west. And because this is built a little differently than um, a lot of the tanks, this is recessed and it's very hard to drain it. It still has some old fuel in it. But uh, what we're going to do is take the pump off, pull the stem out, and start our disassembly. You can see this. So basically, once you get that clip, the clip will come right out. Wants to work with me today? Come on, work with the clip. clip comes out, then the pump comes out. Uh, this does have a replacement leather gasket on it. I put that on. Now this guy 
I'm just going to take a pair of pliers pull that out and I, I thought I was short of a tool but I'm not this is actually uh, has two different heads on it this one is the one I need the small one so I'll take off this nut and washer I was going to do this outside uh, where we had really great light today it's a nice late winter day it's about 66 degrees out but um, I realized I was going to be doing it on a porch and let's see if I got my flashlight here I don't know if you'll be able to see this we'll try and get a look at it the check valve is down in the bottom Now there you go, it's brass. And you can see it looks like this one's nice and pristine looking. Nobody's tried to uh, do anything weird to it. I was going to do this out on the porch, but the porch has boards that um, are about a quarter to a half inch apart. And if I was going to lose any little clips or parts, <laughs> yeah, I was going to have to go under the crawl space and uh, try to look for them with a flashlight so okay this is now threaded onto check valve nice and snug and then this goes over that has just a tiny bit of play so I'm going to see if the fatter side fit a little more tightly and that fits nice and snug this is a heck of a tool I mean that's machined out of a uh, just a solid chunk of steel uh, about forty dollars from the site to my door so paid more for the tool than I did for the stove but I've got uh, three lanterns and three stoves and a, a generator and uh, figured over time I'd be Probably taking some check valves out. So rather than do it kind of a jack leg way, which would not be great because then you're, especially if it's something you're getting ready to use, go on a trip, I'd be without a check valve for a certain period of time. No fun doing that. So now I need to find the correct. wrench or an adjustable wrench okay so we're just going to put an adjustable wrench on here tighten down nice and snug give this thing a turn and that baby is tight I might put it in the vise with some rubber uh, ears on it, and I'll be back in a second. And really, it only took uh, a little more pressure than I needed, but... Now, this check valve is being held by that rod, so everything's going to come right out nice and easy. And there it is. A little dirty. Um, this guy hadn't used this stove, I'm guessing, and since he bought the fuel, and that's probably more than 20 years ago. So, take off the nut and the washer. And if you're working on things, you can find these at um, auto parts stores and actually I found this at a uh, electronics store in Northern Virginia called Micro Center. Uh,
It's a little magnetic. It's a little steel steel cup with a magnet. So if you're working on steel parts and it's magnetized to the, uh, the workbench here. But right here, right now, yeah, the flashlight, there's a small little ball bearing in there. And if it was clean, it would be rattling. When you pump, your uh, air pumps down through here, goes into the tank, and then back pressure is supposed to push that little BB around. And uh, it, it helps the tank, the tank keep pressure. So we're going to shoot. Yeah, so we're shooting brake cleaner. And it's not... Uh, just... It's just barely... moving now. But what I'm going to do to try to uh, eat up any of the corrosion, any of the, the shellac and varnishy gum that's accumulated over the years, I'm going to take this inside, put it in a little pot of white vinegar and boil it. And the vinegar is supposed to um, be very, very good at eating up old gummed up stuff. And then uh, I'm going to put this back in here, pressurize it and uh, See if we can get it going, and I will do a I do a cooking video with this stove. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while. This is great. I mean, if you want to cook a pot of coffee, a uh, thing of oatmeal, some eggs in the middle, or you know hash browns, whatever, three burners really cool. The two burners, the standard, everybody's got those, and they're great. Um, this was a lucky find for me. I thought for thirty bucks, and now I've got a, a great tool for working on them. So uh, I'm going to do this off camera, we'll boil this for a little while, and then uh, see what we can do. So now we fast forward about 15 minutes, and here is the check valve. And it's tough to see the little BB. Um, you might have seen it when I had the, the light on it before. But there is a little BB end. I'm wearing a uh, clip-on mic, so I'm going to try to shake this. I don't know if you can hear that, but the BB's moving. Uh, 15 minutes in white vinegar. This became very, or it had a, a corrosion on it. That cleaned up nicely. And, oh, this is the tool. So, here we go. If you see, there's, there's steel ears here. Those ones are very tight. The other side is for a different size. And it's loose and you can see it move so what I'm going to do is first put the uh, the rod into it the skinny end got a little bit of rim oil <clears throat> this is in the uh, this stays inside the the tank so it never gets hot and uh, because of how tight this thing can seize to itself inside there. Um, I don't want to put any Loctite on it, not even any easy to use Loctite because as I don't. I had a paper towel here and it blew away with the breeze. So I'm going to put a little oil, wipe it mostly off. Bigger end. Put that end, I believe. We'll put it in. Nice and snug. Then we'll put our our nut and washer on. hand tight and this is great because it's it's the same it's the right diameter it, it pretty much guides itself right in to the threads where it should be turn it until it's snug 
but it is brass, so you don't want to go too tight. Take this off. Back this out. And if your uh, check valve's in there tight enough, and you back this out, boom, boom, out it comes. Easy peasy. Take your little rod here that the pump rides up and down on. And I usually keep a little oil on there. It's a little bit of oil. And you just tighten it up. As you do it counterclockwise, it's snug now. Just a little bit of coercion. This uh, oiled leather pump cup will go back in. Down it goes. Last thing is line up your holes for the clip. And what we're going to do, I'm not going to go through all this uh, on, on camera. <clears throat> I'm going to put it together. <clears throat> I'm going to put some fuel in here, take it out back because there's a wind blowing from the west in the front, and uh, see if it'll pressurize, pressurize up. And I will light it up and give it a try. Probably the first time that's been lit in two to three decades. Well, we're ready to uh, light this. This probably hasn't been used in 25 plus years. <clears throat> when I first got it, it wouldn't hold pressure. Uh, I routinely replaced the uh, pump caps. This one had an old uh, plastic one, which coming in the 70s, I guess probably through the 80s. I had a bunch of... Uh, Leather ones, I replaced it, oiled up the leather, pump, 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 nothing. But when I let go of this, I could feel the air coming straight out of here, out of the pump. And that meant that air was going into here, it was coming back, and the check valve was supposed to move and close off and allow the pressure to build, but instead, air was blowing straight out. So um, I had a couple choices on how to try to repair that, um, sort of possibly ruining it and having to buy an easy out. I just bought the correct tool. The tool... <laughs> cost more than a half gallon of uh, fuel and the whole stove but uh, it's a great specialty uh, specialty tool it works great uh, I'll put a I'll put a hashtag um, to the, the company where I got it. it was it was awesome so this is pumped up it's holding pressure you start with the uh, needle up here that means liquid gas is going to go through here after it gets hot it starts to vaporize and then you turn the thing down so just like this and there we go. And that's pretty typical. The yellow flame. Usually see that the first minute or so that it's lit. And this is after one minute, typically. You turn it down. And after I turn it down, I'm gonna light this one and I'm gonna light this one and see how all three of them do. And this is the distributor. I mean, it's coming in the center. It'll send fuel down to this. This one is entirely closed at the moment. Open it up. Still burning. A little more pressure. Uh, flame is nice and blue. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. 
Wow. Side burner went blue instantly, nice and hot. All three burners are going. Um, we've got a little unwanted flame coming out of the, the top here. I did clean this needle, took it apart. I might have to do that again. But that burner's hot, that burner's hot, that burner's hot. And that is a July 1977 uh, grill. So, what are we coming up on? 40, 46 years. Uh, this July, and like I said, all I gotta do is, is work on that, see what's going on with that. But this is great, it's a nice big one. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, if it's helpful, uh, hit like. I'm gonna be doing a cooking video on this on the uh, 426, I'll do one on the 425 also. Um, do a whole meal, use all three burners. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more of these, and thank you for looking today, as always.